So I want to welcome everyone here. Thank you for coming today. It's June 26th. We're here in downtown Pueblo, Colorado at the historic Federal Building on the 400 block of North Main Street. With, with me is uh, uh, Executive Director of the Downtown Association, Margaret Ward Macias. Macias. And uh, Logan Simpson, uh, Incorporated uh, Historic Preservation Specialist and Researcher, Jim Levstick. Yeah, and I'm Alan Lamberg. I'm a city planner with the city planning and the community development department. And uh, I want to thank Todd Pasquin, the owner of this building, for opening up the facility here for today for this meeting. We're just here to uh, welcome you and just uh, tell you a little bit about the project and um, uh, answer your questions and just tell you, let's just kind of kick off this uh, part two of the historic downtown survey of buildings and the historic context. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because about 150 years ago, downtown was the town of Pueblo, 1870. A lot's happened since then, and we did a part one project a couple years ago, uh, which had a, a nice context in many places, intensive surveyed, but we want to continue that with a part two, 15 more intensive surveys. Uh, Jennifer will talk more about that. And, um, but I, I, what I want to see out of this project as your city planner, I want to see all the business owners, the building owners, the downtown association, I want the people who work here, the people who live here, the citizens, the tourists, I want them to all learn from this and to, and to use this information, this educational resource in a way that will promote the revitalization of downtown public. That's my overarching goal. Um, so uh, there is, it is possible that the National Park Service, the National Register of Historic Places, and the state Preservation Office, History Colorado, they are interested in supporting us if we wanted to do a historic district, whether it's like a national historic district. And that's, that's, this project could support that, but, I, but if anyone's gonna do a historic district, I want the property owners to show support of that. Uh, so I, I think it's more than just historic districts, it's all about promotion and uh, revitalization because that's what we do here. That's what I do. All right, so I want to, I want to take it away to Ms. Jen to explain oh, okay. her role. Sure. Um, so just to build off a little bit of what Alan was already discussing. So we're, uh, Logan Simpson is being charged with doing part two of a two-part um, survey. Um, as you mentioned, and as this poster shows, this was the original survey area. And there were a number of properties that were looked at during that time period. Um, where they essentially said needs more data and so um, collaborating with the city they picked out 15 properties that they were interested in having us do more intensive work on so we're really just focused on 15 properties um, basically from about first street up to 8th street um, the poster is actually right behind us yep. here oh, I so these are the actual, so these are the actual properties that we're going to be looking at and we've um, my colleague and I um, Rosemary, who's over here, she wants to wave to everybody. So if you see us wandering around town um, tomorrow, maybe not as much when we're in the library, but uh, if you've seen us, this is what we're doing. But both of us are documenting these 15 buildings. These are the intensive surveys that we're doing. Um, and that's a combination of field inventory, so physically going to each and every one of these buildings, documenting them on inventory forms that are established by the local SHPO or the State Historic Preservation Office for Colorado. Um, we do inventory photographs. Um, we document everything that we can see as it is today, the existing condition of the building. Um, and additionally, we do archival research, so we look into the histories, we look at city directories, old maps, old photos, to look at the history of that building over time and to see what kinds of changes have happened to those buildings. So one of the ways um, that we identify changes is, is through those historic photos, and that, that is critically important for us as far as evaluating the significance of each and every one of these properties. So as Alan mentioned, one of the ultimate goals or maybe outcomes for this project is to find enough sort of, you know, historic fabric in this area that has enough integrity left that it can actually become a historic district. So that's sort of, we're kind of helping with that process by looking at these additional 50 properties within this area to see if we can fill in, you know, essentially enough to create a boundary for a historic district. So knowing whether or not those changes happened in this building historically, or whether or not they were recent, whether or not those changes are what we would consider to be reversible changes. So sometimes just because a building has stucco on it, even if it might be unsightly in some cases, doesn't necessarily mean that it detracts from that building's history, that oftentimes 
there is still historic fabric underneath that stucco, and you can still see the basic form of the original um, plan of that building. So, with that said, all of that information then gets taken together, and we can then tell you which of the buildings in your um, downtown area has enough significance, or what we refer to as integrity, which is ability to convey significance, so that you could create a historic district. So we're kind of, you know, one sort of piece in this larger management goal, which is, you know, starting with the National Register of Historic District, you know, which is sort of the ideal goal, and being able to take that and then parlay it into efforts towards revitalization. So there are a number of benefits that would um, get attached to the designation of some of these historic properties. And some of you can tell me later, too, whether or not you're an owner of any of these properties in these boundaries. Because this actually is an economic incentive for you to buy into this idea that we would get these buildings listed. Um, National Register designation is um, its not regulatory. It actually only provides incentives for you to maintain that property. If you choose not to maintain that property, it simply means you're no longer eligible or you're no longer listed in the National Register, but it doesn't penalize you in any other way. All it does is says you're no longer eligible for a rehabilitation tax credit, there's no property tax deductions and things like that for you. So if anything, it is actually a benefit to a property owner, a business owner, to um, agree to the designation of their property in the National Register. So that's one sort of thing I want to make sure that everybody understands if you are a property owner here, that in fact it's not it's not scary and it's not onerous to have your building listed in the National Register. If anything, it is a benefit to you and it will be a benefit to your neighbors if you all agree to the designation. Um, so that's sort of what we're doing. Um, we're here for the next couple days, and um, and I'm here also too today just to kind of introduce myself. You guys will see me again as this process moves on and we get more information. We'll have um, a lot more to share with you guys probably in the fall, I think is when we're coming back. Um, but this is an opportunity too for you guys. If you want my car, you have information, you want to share with me if you've been a long time resident and you know a lot about the changes you know, there's a lot of valuable information that I can get from you guys here that are in the audience that have lived in this community and know this community in a way that I won't as somebody who's coming from the outside. So I would welcome, you know, any, um, inf you know, any information you'd like to share. And again, too, later in this evening, if you guys have questions about the process, um, I'm happy to answer those questions, too. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. Thank you. I also wanted to add, uh, some many buildings in downtown have been stuccoed, and some of them actually look good uh, it's it's they were uh, and others are some of them are stuck with but boarded up so I just wanted to emphasize that like say Schmitty's Greenlight Tavern there's a stucco on the side but it looks good you know and up, upstairs is brick uh, so it's just it depends everything's a case-by-case -case thing so we just wanted to emphasize that as well yeah. it'd be nice if uh, some of the boarded up places would be restored that's definitely we all can agree upon that yeah uh, I'd like to bring it to Ms. Margaret about the Downtown Association and what they're working on as well. Well, as Ella mentioned, in 1870, the uh, City of Public was founded. Next year is 2020. That's 150 years. The Downtown Association would like to, to get together with the other groups in town and have a massive year-long celebration. Of, uh, of the 150 years, the fact that, that the city has been here that long, and uh, and there's there's a lot of things that that happened during that time that can be celebrated, and also it's it's a great place to live. You want to add something else, Peggy? Couple of things. Let me come over here. Um, one thing is I know. Okay. Um, the Downtown Association has for the last, well, I don't know, 10 years maybe, maybe more than that, um, created a historic calendar on an annual basis. It's available around town or from the Downtown Association. And next year's <coughs> starts with the few pictures that there are of Pueblo in 1870. So that's where it starts next year and then we move forward as on different months by decades. So watch for that. It'll be available probably September or so. Um, watch for that because it's pretty fun. And I think you'll be surprised to see my goal was to show Main Street in 1870, it's actually Santa Fe, Santa Fe in 1870 versus just 20 years later. The difference is in 
incredible. So Pueblo was booming. So I think, I think it's great when you talk about the 150 years to really see what happened in those first 20 years. So the other thing I want to talk about briefly, Margaret, uh, last year, two years ago, last year, <coughs> created a walking tour for downtown Pueblo. So there were brochures back there. Um, if you haven't, there are actually, yes, thank you. There are actually two tours in that brochure. One, yes, thank you, Van. <laughs> um, one of them is a little shorter than the other, but they're great. And so it shows a picture of the building as it looked, and you can see as you're walking by what it looks like today. Um, we have been asked to look at Union Avenue and do something similar. You know, Union Avenue has plaques. Um, but one of the things that we did in addition to the brochure, which is available at the chamber and where else, Margaret? The, the Welcome Center, <coughs> the, kind of the uh, con convention center. And so if you see people walking around with the brochure, um, you might want to give them a smile and see if they have questions. Because we, we did, uh, Margaret and I did. Um, we were actually down at the Heritage Center and these ladies were from Seattle, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seattle. So they were so excited that we had to walk into a merger. <clears throat> so it's also available on our Downtown Association app, which if you don't have that, you need that. Because not only does it have the walking tour, it has our events, so you know when the parade of lights is. Yeah. Put it on right? your phone. Put it on your phone. So it's available in Google's Play Store or the Apple, is it called Apple Store? Um, Pueblo downtown, and the walking tour is right there on your phone. It's on our website too. Oh, and it's on our website too. So. What's the website? Down. Pueblo downtown.com. Pueblo downtown.com. Pueblo downtown.com. So we were also very excited to partner with Alan in trying to get people excited about the shape that we are in, because I think for a long time our downtown. Um, you know, from the 70s when all the retail moved out, people tend to kind of not really look at downtown. <clears throat> the people that are that live here, people that come from elsewhere say, it's wonderful. I, I am a realtor. I have taken people down here and they're like, it's charming. When's the last time you heard a public person call our downtown charming? So that's our goal is that Pueblo people actually recognize we're in pretty good shape down here and there is definitely room for improvement. Um, but we do want people to get excited about downtown Pueblo and to partner with Alan and whatever we need to do to, to make that happen. Did you want to hint at what the promotion committee's been working on? We've been working on events for the 1870 promotion. Um, we're not sure quite yet that's how probably. that's gonna how that's going to shake out. It depends on our partners, who all we can partner with, the city, county, historical society, of um, Pueblo History, Eating, the archaeological society. We're trying to get everybody to try to do something to recognize that 1870 date and to really make it a year-long celebration. We talked about color books for kids. We talked about a scavenger hunt. Um, what else? Um. Maybe what restaurants could do? Yes, yes. Um, like to have an 1870 special. Maybe not dinner, but maybe lunch. <laughs> two, two for 1870. Okay. So we're excited about it. 